start and read button your jacket. Just, I, will, I will not listen to a word you say. Oh, sorry. 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 Max Heisman won an election by deception. Max Heisman enjoys her job. She enjoys being the man. And at first, she thought she was guaranteed a second term. But then, Dr. Luke Ginger came into the the scene. Dr. Ginger started to gain support. Max Heisman started to get scared. She started looking for solutions, and she found one. This idea of erosion, of education, undermine Ms. Ginger's support base and keep her supporters from voting for her. Now, this isn't illegal. Unethical? Maybe, but not illegal. And so they implemented this strategy. They put it into action. And as the weeks went by, as the poll results came in, as Ms. Ginger continued to gain ground, it was clear that this strategy wasn't working. And that's when Max Heisman got desperate. And when Casey Friend showed up and presented a solution, Max Heisman took it. And that's when Max Heisman crossed the line. That's when unethical became illegal. That's when politics became fraud. <coughs> and when the results came back, as Max Heisman tried to celebrate, she knew in the back of her mind that that victory was tainted. She knew she won that election by deception. Now, election fraud is a very specific definition in Midlands. And there are three things that we need to show. That actual fraud occurred, that it was intentional, and that it affected the outcome of the election. Now, opposing counsel has conceded that there was fraud. That's not the question. There were phone calls, there were flyers, the polling places moved. Fraud occurred. The question was Max Heisman the one responsible? And we've shown you that that's the case. We've shown you that Max Heisman knew fraud was going on. Max Heisman knew this strategy was being put into place. And Max Heisman knew that it could affect the outcome of the election. And that's intent. And that's knowledge. And that's intent. And because of that, Max Heisman is committed election fraud. Now, we can't just tell you this. We've had to prove it. And we have. We had a burden called preponderance of the evidence. We've shown you that it's more likely than not that Mayor Heisman committed election fraud. It's more likely than not that she knew there was fraud occurring, she knew it would influence the outcome, and she went ahead with it anyway. Remember those phone calls. Now, they came from a burner phone. We don't know who owned it, but we do know who was using it. Amari White explained that she was suspicious the day of the election that he called that phone and that Casey French, nearly a few feet away, picked up. There wasn't an answer, but it was pretty obvious. He was the one on the other end of that phone. His distinctive, smooth voice was the one making those calls, was the one spreading false information to voters. Mayor Heisman knew about that phone. Mayor Heisman had that phone in her contacts. Mayor Heisman entered that phone into her contacts on the same day it was activated, on the same day that Sam Ziegler saw the two of them meeting. He saw Tom Lyon, Casey French, and Max Heisman have a three-hour midnight meeting. And the next day, the call started. The next day, Casey French went out and they started calling thousands of voters telling them if they didn't own a home, they couldn't vote. If they'd ever been arrested, they couldn't vote. Telling them they were fined to jail time if they broke these rules. Telling them lies. And then even on election day, Casey French went out and started distributing flyers, putting up posters, again, telling people that if they didn't own a home, they couldn't vote. Telling them false information, fraudulent information. Information that fit right in with the Heisman campaign strategy, erosion and education. 
tell them why they can't vote, keep them from voting, and you win the election. Tell them the wrong information, take advantage of them, and you keep them from voting. You keep Elizabeth Ginger from winning. We also know that the polling place got moved from its normal location to slow-mo gymnasium, small, out of the way. And those logistical problems alone could have caused the low voter turnout, could have caused Miss Ginger to lose. Even though the polls showed us something different, the polls showed us that Elizabeth Ginger was ahead, that she was the predominant faith, she should have won. But she didn't because of fraud, because of Max Heisman's fraud. This fraud caused someone else to win. Now, we don't need to prove this to you. The law is clear on that. If we've proven that the fraud was intentional, if we prove that Mayor Heisman knew what she was doing and knew that we the election, then we can presume that it changed the outcome, which makes sense. Why would someone commit fraud if they don't have to? Max Heisman lied to the voters, lied to the people, because the only way she could win was through deception. But not only can we presume that it affected the outcome, we know it's affected the outcome. The defense's own witness, Dr. Davis, explained that. He said that if none of this fraud was there, the calls weren't made, the posters weren't put up, Elizabeth Ginger would have won. Mayor Heisman hadn't contacted Casey French, hadn't arranged for those calls, hadn't moved to any place. Elizabeth Ginger would have won. But instead, Truman was robbed. Truman didn't get the mayor they wanted, didn't get the mayor that they deserved. Instead, they got a mayor who has a reputation for sleaziness, who is unethical, who will bend and break the rules to get what she wants. A mayor who committed election fraud to win. A mayor who lied to voters to win. And it's because she won that election by deception you have no other choice but to find Max Heisman liable for electric fraud. Thank you.